Hi everyone, thank you for joining us uh, for today's webinar, Cir Circumnavigating Iceland with Locals. My name is Anna Kamarar. I work with Emerging Destinations. We are a sales and marketing representation company in North America. We have offices in Atlanta, in Saskatoon, in Canada, and I'm based in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, today, we will be uh, presenting our client Iceland Pro Cruises with its cruise ship, um, the Sea Venture. But before starting with today's webinar, I would love uh, to give you just a brief overview about our company in case any of you is uh, new uh, and it's uh, the first time joining any of our webinars and also a few housekeeping notes to go over uh, today's webinar. So as I mentioned before, we are Emerging Destinations, a sales and marketing representation company in North America, basically the US and Canada. As you can see on your screen now, we have a big, diverse, and adventure portfolio of cool companies in cool places across Europe, the Americas region, and Africa. We represent different companies like DMCs, hotels, lodges, uh, and cruises. Um, as uh, we are presenting today in cl a client in Europe, I would like just to focus on, on this continent. In Europe, we represent today's uh, host, Iceland Pro Cruises, who is sailing um, around Iceland and Greenland with the Sea Venture cruise ship. We are also representing its sister company, which is Iceland Pro Travel, a DMC offering amazing uh, land tours, self-guided tours uh, in Iceland. And we also represent Pax More Greece, which is a DMC offering amazing uh, trips and itineraries across Greece. They can help you with anything from hotels, resorts, uh, rental yachts, uh, any logistics, ex excursions, etc. So if you need anything uh, from Iceland, Greenland and Greece, please feel free to reach out to me after this webinar. You can see my email address at the bottom of your screen now. In case you have also some uh, request or need more information about any client in the Americas region or Africa, just uh, have in mind, I don't want to take too much time uh, introducing all clients today, but just have in mind that we can help you in the Americas region in countries like Panama, um, Chile, Ecuador, and Colombia. And then in Europe, we can help you with Uganda, Rwanda, Mozambique, Kenya, Zambia, uh, South Africa, Tanzania, and the country of Sierra Leone. So here again, anything you need from Africa or the Americas, please feel free to drop me a line. My email address is Anna with one N at emergingdestinations.com. So before starting with the Iceland webinar today, a few housekeeping notes. This webinar is being recorded, so don't worry if you need to step away either to answer the phone or have a cup of coffee, whatever you need to do, please feel free to do it. We are recording this webinar and we will be sending you this playback uh, by the end of this week. We are also uploading um, this uh, webinar, this recording on our YouTube channel, Emerging Destinations, Emerging Destinations, which I, hi I highly recommend to subscribe. You will find different playlists there, different continents, and we are uploading all the webinars that we are conducting. So it's really a very useful resource for you. And we are also uploading this webinar on our website, emergingdestinations.com. On the webinar tab, you will, you will find not only the past webinar, all the recordings, but you will find also the calendar with the upcoming webinar. So please take a look at that. Maybe we are um, covering a destination or a company or a product that you might be interested in. Um, so this is regarding the recording and our follow-up email. Last but not least, um, please feel free to ask any question. On the control panel on your right, you can type any question you may have during this webinar 
and we will make sure um, to answer those questions at the end of this webinar, if time permitting. Otherwise, we will make sure to include the Q&A with all questions and all answers on the follow-up email that you will be receiving by Friday. On that follow-up email, you will be getting the Q&A, this recording, as well as the PowerPoint presentation that our clients, our client from Iceland Procuses is um, using for today's webinar. So uh, this is all regarding um, today's webinar. Let me introduce you to our friends from Iceland Procuses, and I hope you enjoy um, this uh, trip around Iceland. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Herman Helguson and I am the expedition leader at Iceland Pro Cruises. Uh, first, a few things about me. Um, I've been a tour guide for, um, yeah, 12 years since 2011 uh, and I started working in a museum. Then after that, I started working at Iceland Pro Cruises in 2015. And in the same year, I finished my uh, studies in tourism um, at the University of Iceland. And I also got a certification as an Iceland guide. Um, yeah, in 2016, I founded a company uh, that uh, was uh, doing property management here in Reykjavik. Uh, but I soon found out that uh, office work is not something that I like to do and uh, far away from my passion. That's why I decided to go full on into the expedition cruise industry. And uh, that's why this is my ninth season starting now in May uh, with Iceland Pro Cruises. And I'm very, very excited to uh, start another season. But enough about me. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our cruises. We have um, our main product is the Iceland circumnavigation, uh, and this is our ship you can see on the picture. Uh, in uh, this year, uh, this summer, we are offering this trip uh, for 10 days, and then in 2024, next year, we will offer this trip for nine days. But uh, Svenja will tell you a little bit more about the ship uh, later on. I, have, I will more cover things about um, the trip itself, the ports we visit, the shore excursions, the expedition team, and also tell you about our concept of bringing Iceland on board. We think it's important that the, our passengers do, do not only experience Iceland on shore, but also in the ship. That, that's how they can, can get the strongest uh, Iceland experience possible. But uh, just to mention a few things about the ship, uh, it, uh, it is built in 1990, renovated in 2019, and we have up to 164 guests. But like I say, Svenja will cover that in a little bit more detail as we go on in this webinar. Uh, so here you can see our schedule. We embark and disembark all passengers in Reykjavik, and that's also day number one. After that, we uh, sail to Snæfellsnes Peninsula in West Iceland um, to a very small port that is called Arnastabi. And that's where we use uh, our small zodiacs to get on shore because the ship is too big for this port. We, uh, in some cases during the Iceland circumnavigation, we really try to uh, visit places uh, where there are very few tourists, uh, so we can enjoy the place on our, for only for our passengers. And uh, that's why we visit Arnastapi. Uh, it's, it's less visited than other places uh, on the peninsula. Um, and after that visit, we, we'll head to Isafjörður in the West Fjords. Isafjörður is the biggest uh, town in the West Fjords with about 2,700 inhabitants. Uh, and uh, they have a very good 
port there for, for cruise ships. After Isafjörður, we, we will visit Siglufjörður on day number four in the morning uh, and Grimsey Island in the afternoon. Grimsey Island uh, is another interesting stop uh, that is uh, north of the, of the Arctic Circle and actually the only part of Iceland that is north of the Arctic Circle. Um, on the next day, we visit another island, uh, which is close to Husavik, that is called Flatin Skjálvandi. As you can see, it's not on this map, uh, but it's a tiny island with an enormous amount of birds uh, close to Husavik. And that, uh, like I say, we visit in the morning and visit Husavik uh, in the afternoon on day five, and we stay overnight in Husavik. Husavik is, uh, like many of you might know, the whale watching capital of Iceland. After our visit to Husavik, we will uh, arrive in East Iceland, say this further, and head from there to Djupivogur in Southeast I Iceland. And just to mention, in all of these stops, or most of them, we will visit the highlights of Iceland. Like in Djupivogur, we will visit the famous glacier lagoon. We'll take uh, uh, do a, a shore excursion there. And in each port, actually, we have multiple options of shore excursions. But our last stop is then uh, Westman Air on the Iceland circumnavigation, the Westman Islands. And uh, then we'll head to um, Reykjavik again for the disembarkation. And here is the plan for 2024. You can see we have almost the same schedule, except we will not be visiting Grimsey Island and we'll also not be visiting um, Siglufjörður. Um, that's how it is. And here's another map uh, that you can see. Uh, you can see the red dots. Those are some of the places we are visiting. Um, yeah, we, we actually visit all places in Iceland or all regions except the south coast itself. And the reason for that is uh, the south coast, there's so much um, black sand coming from the glacier rivers and there are actually no ports uh, that we are able to go alongside on the south coast itself. And that is why we visit the Westman Eyjar or the Westman Islands. However, uh, our passengers can book a pre or post uh, shore excursion um, with us and then visit either south, the south coast or the Golden Circle. And by doing that, uh, of course, including the cruise, they have visited most of Icelandic, the most of Icelandic coastline, so to say. So you, our passengers see a huge part of Iceland in our cruise. And like you know, um, each part of Iceland is very different uh, from another. But enough about that. We will continue. I'm, I'm going to show you a few pictures uh, of the ports we are visiting, um, just so you get an idea how they look like and, and the area around them. This is Arna Stapi, the first stop after uh, embarkation in Reykjavik. This is uh, like a, a tiny village, um, to be honest with a lot of bird life and you can see the basalt columns in the rocks just amazing scenery and very calm and quiet nice first stop for our passengers then um, the next stop like i mentioned is isa fjordur uh, way bigger town than arna stapi but still only 2700 inhabitants in isa fjordur and actually in the whole west Fjords region we have only 7000 inhabitants so there are not a lot of people living in, in these areas um, compared to what uh, you are maybe used to that are listening to this or, or, or uh, yeah. But Isafjörður has a very nice port uh, and we'll go alongside there in Arna Stapi, the, the this port here, we will use the Zodiacs to get on shore because the port is too small. After Isafjörður, like I say, Siglufjörður has a population of uh, 1200 people. Uh, they have been, uh, yeah, building a lot and improving uh, the infrastructure in Siglifjörður. It was sort of like a ghost town about 15 to 20 years ago after the economy collapsed. Uh, 
uh, due to lack of herring. Uh, but now they're on the way up again. They have built a new hotel, a fish factory, and they have also a fam famous herring museum that our passengers will visit. And of course, in the tourism industry there, they have a lot of uh, tours they offer in the town. Grimsey, a magical small island, enormous amount of bird life. And uh, for the people that want to see the puffin, this is the perfect place. Uh, and the northernmost point of our destination, destination, at least where we go on shore. A tiny village with only about uh, yeah, 50 inhabitants and our, our passengers can walk around and uh, enjoy the beautiful bird life and the scenery in Grimsey. That was like I mentioned in the afternoon after we visit Siklifjörður and then on the following day uh, we visit uh, another tiny island where we will use the zodiacs to get on shore. That island is called Flate in Skjálvandi Bay, that's the same bay uh, as where Husavik is, and like you see on this picture, if you haven't overdosed on puffins already in Grimsey, then you can see even more in Flate in Skjálvandi, along with a lot of other bird species, of course, it's not only puffins. Uh, then we visit the whale watching capital of Iceland, Husavi. We will offer uh, whale watching tours there. Uh, they have in the summertime 99% probability of seeing whales, mainly the humpback whale, but uh, we have also seen orcas, um, um, blue whales, and you, minky whales, for example. So, so there's a lot that can be seen in Husavik. Uh, and like I mentioned, we, we really wanted to allow the passengers or, or, or offer them the option of, of going out in the evening one time in, in our Iceland circumnavigation. So they can visit Husavik in the evening because we stay there overnight. And then we had to say this further, this is, uh, a town uh, that is uh, built up a lot on, on the tourism industry because there's a ferry that comes here from Denmark and Faroe Islands uh, uh, once, one time every week at least uh, throughout the whole year. So they have a lot of hotels uh, in Seyðisfjörður, but this is also like a, a art town, a lot of artistic stuff going on and young people um, yeah, doing their art in Seyðisfjörður, and many say one of the most beautiful towns in Iceland. Uh, next, we visit Djúpivogur, a um, very small town with only 400 inhabitants. From there, uh, like mentioned earlier, we will visit one of our highlands in Iceland, the Glacier Lagoon. But if people want to relax in Djúpivogur, we of course have a program for them. We have a kayak tour, for example, that people can join and do not necessarily need to go on a bus tour. And then last but not least, we have Heimae, which is the main island of the Westman Islands. Um, that's where we will do a Zodiac cruise for all passengers, which of course included for all, and offer uh, a few shore excursions um, as well. Like in every other port, the port we, we have shore excursions. And what we think is very important is uh, we want, like I mentioned earlier, to bring Iceland on board. That doesn't only mean uh, people, that also means food and drinks. So we have uh, on this picture, you can see here, our hotel manager ordering fresh fish from the fishermen in Isafjörður. And that's what uh, we will offer to our passengers as well. So we buy fresh fish every cruise. Uh, for our passengers to enjoy during dinner time and also at lunch time. We have Icelandic lamb. We have also Icelandic breakfast corner where you can try out the Icelandic yogurt called skir. Many of you might know about that one, along with Icelandic rye bread and uh, smoked um, Icelandic smoked lamb, for example. We have Icelandic beer and Icelandic snaps as well. And here you can see an example, uh, of course, the famous Brennivin, which um, is our um, national 
or Icelandic spirit. And then we have, of course, uh, a lot of beer, a vari variety of beers. And we even have a beer tasting for all uh, passengers one time in the cruise. Local entertainment as well. We have uh, one of our expedition team member is a singer and she will sing for our passengers um, a few times during the cruise and sometimes the rest of the expedition joins as you can see on the picture. But we also try to get um, another local entertainment from, from one of the ports we visit to come on board and uh, do something nice for the passengers. For example, here in Greenland, we have a drum dancer coming on board and uh, that was very popular among the passengers. They really, really enjoyed that. Um, here's the expedition team. Uh, the people that uh, will travel or, or do, do a lot for our guests regarding information. Uh, these people are the ones that guide the shore excursions. So they joy, go on the buses, they go on the hikes, and they guide the trips. They are also doing um, uh, lectures about, uh, for example, birds, geology, history of Iceland, uh, whales, or Icelandic language. And uh, the expedition team is usually in Iceland around 10 to 11. And then in Greenland, we have 13 to 14 in the team. And uh, most of them, are locals and Icelandic. So um, we, we, we try to have also a local expedition team. So usually on each Iceland circle navigation, we have um, three or four Icelanders on board. And the rest is uh, are people that either live here or have a massive experience in traveling in Iceland and know a lot about the country. Just to mention uh, an example, the guy uh, with the glasses in the middle, the, the shorter one, he, has he is from Germany, and but he has lived here for 20 years uh, and working as a tour guide. So the, he is basically a local person. But the expedition team is uh, organized like uh, the following. So there's one expedition leader. He um, organizes the Zodiac cruises and uh, the tasks of the um, expedition team members, along with uh, adjusting the technical schedule with the captain. Uh, and so on. Then we have a cruise leader. He, he is more like uh, focusing on things on board the vessel, making sure everything is working properly, sort of like a quality man manager in a way. Then we have uh, uh, five guides usually and uh, Svenja and Klaus. Klaus is on the far right on, on, on the picture and Svenja is uh, um, on the left, the dark haired one. Um, and, and they are in the office. They organize the shore excursion and are basically um, our brain on board. They, they, they are very good at organizing everything and coordinating all the different departments together. And uh, I have talked a lot about um, the uh, Zodiacs. We have 14 Zodiacs on board and uh, they look exactly like that. We have one driver that is uh, the only one that uh, is standing and then we have five people on each side so 10 passengers in total and uh, the zodiacs make make it uh, make for make it able for us to um, go to smaller ports or visit smaller ports that uh, uh, our ship is too big to get alongside and also discover the wildlife and the landscape from a very closer range than the ship would be able to do. So we can be watching birds uh, laying in cliffs just using the Zodiac. So we use, uh, offer our passengers a Zodiac cruise as well. Of course, also shuttling to the small islands. Uh, the schedule on board is um, very tight. We have something going on from the moment our passengers wake up until they fall asleep. So there, there is no shortage of things to do on board. A typical day, I would say, is uh, our passengers start, of course, having breakfast. Then they go on a shore excursion that can last from anywhere from three to eight hours. Um, our passengers come back from the shore excursion uh, in the afternoon, usually. 
they uh, we get a port talk held by us so that's what we do every day we do a port talk where we tell them about the fall uh, about the next day and everything they need to know about the next day and then they can go to our um, sea breeze lounge get the gets a, a cup of coffee and and enjoy the so-called tea time and after that we will usually offer a lecture in the late afternoon um, um, usually like i say about birds or geology or, or for example history of iceland and then in the e evening after dinner we have some sort of entertainment like uh, pub quiz or beer tasting um, every evening we have something going on so but of course uh, we are sailing past beautiful landscapes and to those who do not uh, want to uh, join the entertainment part they can just go out on the decks and enjoy a fantastic time looking at the amazing scenery like you can, you can see here on the picture and on this one as well this is uh, taking in the midnight sun um, that our passengers will be experiencing in uh, yeah june and uh, early july as well amazing weathers we can have in the summertime in iceland and we offer like i say at least three different uh, shore excursion options in every port we visit. Um, I really want to show you um, a few examples so you get uh, some sort of idea what, what we are doing. This uh, picture is, for example, in a geothermal area called Kverarand in North Iceland. And um, we offer hikes. Uh, of course, people have different uh, preferences. So we offer hikes in most of the ports we visit for people that are more active. And uh, for people that want a more relaxing tour, we also have excursions in every port we visit, almost every port. So people can choose what they want. But uh, also uh, we have uh, a lot of different uh, options I, I will show you later on. And of course, I showed you the puffin earlier. This the summer is the best time to see birds and wildlife in East, in Iceland. Uh, everyone wants to see, of course, the puffin, but uh, everything comes alive after a cold winter. The whales uh, come back, the birds, and of course, the vegetation starts to grow again. So it's a beautiful, beautiful time to be in Iceland. Uh, here are more uh, examples. We offer an ATV tour in the Westman Islands. For people that want maybe a little bit more action, uh, we go on top of Snæfellsjökull glacier, so people can really go on top of a glacier in one of our uh, excursions in Snæfellsnes. Whale watching in Husavik, they use these uh, rip boats to get uh, very close to the whales, uh, and and people are usually very happy with this one uh, because it's very likely that they will see a whale. Then we have over 10,000 waterfalls in Iceland, and this is one of them that we will visit, Dinjandi waterfall, uh, but we will visit multiple, multiple other ones for people to enjoy. Glacier Lagoon, another highlight of Iceland. Uh, our passengers will go on these amphibian boats and uh, sail close to these icebergs floating on the lagoon. Osbergi Canyon in North Iceland, another uh, highlight of Iceland. And uh, the, these were just a few examples of um, our sewer excursions. And you can see um, um, what we are trying to do in our concept. You know, I, what I think no other uh, cruise company is doing uh, like, like we are. We are bringing Iceland on board. We have the uh, local expedition team, we have local food, we have local entertainment and local beer as well. And uh, we also have Iceland specialists. We specialize in Iceland and that's, uh, uh, and that's why people will experience also Iceland on board the ship, uh, not only on shore. That's why we think we are unique in that matter. But uh, I want to also talk a little bit about Greenland. The Icelandic circumnavigation is not the only cruise we are offering, uh, but that will 
just be a brief introduction because uh, we are talking mainly about Iceland now. Uh, in uh, this year, uh, we will uh, visit Greenland for 12 days in a 12 day cruise and next year, 11 days. Uh, on the same ship, the uh, MSC Venture that Svenja will talk later more about and uh, introduce you to the ship. And this is the sailing schedule. Uh, we will uh, start in Reykjavik uh, on the first Greenland cruise and uh, on the second with we will start in Greenland and end in Reykjavik. So basically we start the first cruise in Reykjavik and end in Greenland and on the second one we start in Greenland and end in Reykjavik. And uh, as you can see uh, on this plan, we will visit both East and West Greenland. Uh, but Greenland is more, a little bit more in the expedition uh, direction. Uh, in our Iceland circumnavigations, we don't have any wet landings. So it's very comfortable for our passengers to always have a, uh, a place we, where we are alongside, or at least a jetty where a zodiac can go alongside. There are no boots in that matter needed. But in Greenland, we have more uh, more of smaller ports and we use the zodiacs more. That doesn't mean we have wet landings, but uh, we use them way more than in Iceland, at least. And uh, Greenland is, for me, as well as Iceland, both incredible places. I would say, if I need to, to compare, uh, Iceland is a way smaller island than Greenland, uh, where you can see a lot of things on a, such a small island. Whereas Greenland is massive and, and the landscape is more dramatic and bigger mountains, huge icebergs. Uh, so that, that's maybe the difference. But Greenland is simply stunningly beautiful as well. Here you can see a few pictures from Greenland just to give you an idea. Uh, and this is a typical stop where we have a small jetty. You can see the zodiacs go alongside with the passengers and they will just go on their way to the shore excursions or, or, or just explore on their own, which is always also a possibility in our cruises. But uh, I think I am done here and Svenja wants to tell you some interesting information as well. Thank you very much so far for listening. Thank you, Herman. This was a very great introduction of our Iceland circumnavigation. And now I will give everyone a little more detail into our ship, the Sea Venture. But first of all, I would like to introduce myself. So my name is Svenja and I'm the head of sales and product management at Iceland Pro Cruises. I'm working with Iceland Pro Cruises since 2016. So one year later than actually Hermann started. But I'm also not only working in the office, I'm also working on the cruise, on the ship, as part of the expedition team, as Hermann maybe have heard no? the name Svenja as being in the office on board the expedition team. So, like I always love to say, I'm actually enjoying the best of both worlds. I get to spend my summertime on board circumnavigating Iceland and Greenland, and during the winter time, I'm preparing the upcoming season and organize everything with regard to shore excursions and yeah well everything what needs to be done to have a great cruise for our passengers on board so let me introduce to you our ship the msc venture we are using this ship since 2022 when we started with it going to Greenland, but Iceland Pro Cruises is already on the market since 2015, circumnavigating Iceland. So we do have a lot of experience going around and actually Iceland Pro Cruises is the sister company of Iceland Pro Travel Group, which already is more than 25 years on the market. So we are an Iceland specialist. So in 2015, it was decided to come up with a cruise around Iceland to broader our portfolio of Iceland travel. So since 2022, we're using the MSC Venture and we'll be using it for the future as well. This is a relatively small ship. It's especially uh, built to be an expedition ship. We have 82 cabins on board and so a maximum capacity of 164 guests in total. 
It was launched in 1990 and renovated in 2022. So it's actually, it is it is an old lady, with, which has a lot of charm, but it's still in a very, very good shape. So, it, and it also has the highest ice class. So actually built for cruising in Arctic and waters and Greenland, especially. We have a maximum speed of 16 knots and a length of 364 feet. The whole ship has seven decks. And here you can see actually the highest deck, which is the pool deck, um, where we have some sun chairs and a pool filled with water. But there's also a gym and a sauna on this level, on this deck, so people can use those spa amenities for relaxing while being at sea or just while being in port and enjoying the beautiful weather we even have in Iceland and Greenland. It is cold, but when the sun is out, it gets really warm as well. Then we have one restaurant on board the ship, the Ocean View restaurant. <clears throat> it's located on deck four and offers um, space for all the passengers on tables from two, from two reaching up to eight at the same time. We serve, um, or three meals will be served in the restaurant, which is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast and lunch are served buffet style, while dinner is a la carte. But we not only have three, we have three meals. We also have the tea time where we um, serve some snacks and coffee and cakes. And in the late evening after dinner, we serve the midnight snack, which is usually a hot snack. And those two will be um, can be taken in in the sea breeze lounge, which is on deck five. This is also more or less, as we say, the heart of the ship because there's also the bar. And here, a lot of our entertainments take place as the Icelandic singing from our opera singer or local entertainment, but as well as pub quizzes, Greenlandic beer tasting, everything more or less related to the fun part of the ship is being done in the sea breeze lounge to have a cozy atmosphere for the passengers while enjoying the entertainment. But we of course also have a conference room and auditorium, which is the expedition lounge on deck seven with, as you can see, big pictures. So while listening to our lectures or briefings, passengers can still enjoy the beautiful atmosphere and landscape passing by. So in this expedition lounge on deck seven, all our lectures usually take place. Then I would like to give you a short introduction on our cabins we have on board. We have um, seven different um, category types. So category one, is on the lowest deck, which is deck number three. Those um, cabins do have two portholes, as you can see on the picture, so it is even well, quite bright. And they are 195 feet big. They can either be uh, with double or single bed, so all cabins have single beds, which can be pushed together as a double bed. And on category one, it is also possible to have the triple occupancy. As you can see on the picture, the sofa sofa you see there can be put together as a bed. So it's a sofa bed. And they do have a safe and a wardrobe and a TV. Then we have categories two to five, which are located on deck four and five. So the difference, we get a lot of questions about the difference between category two and three or four and five because they are on the same deck, but the cheaper category, so in this case category two, compared to category three, 
is in the front of the ship. So people who rather get seasick, rather want to be in the middle of the ship, so would need to get a category three. But if you are fine and uh, can handle no, some movement of the ship, because usually you feel the movement of the ship in the, the more forward you are, then you will be also fine with category two. So that's the only difference. It's not the difference in deck between two and three or four and five. It's just being the location of the cabin being in the more front. But all those cabins do have window, uh, panorama windows, as you can see also on the picture. And in category two and three, we also have triple occupancy cabins with those sofa beds. And also they are the same size, 195 feet. Then we have category six, which is our balcony cabins. They are located on deck six. And they as well have single or double beds. And But of course, they do have a big balcony where you can go out and enjoy the beauty while sailing or just while being in port enjoying the sun on your own balcony. And last but not least, we have our category seven. We have two balcony suites on board, which have even a bigger balcony as you might be able to see. You can, even through the second you know, window, you can still see the balcony. So they are bigger than the balconies of deck six and also in size, cabin size they are bigger than the ones on deck six. All our bathrooms have showers and they all have you know, TVs, safes, wardrobes, and that. So what you will get when you book a cruise with Iceland Pro Cruises. So of course the accommodation in the cabin category you booked, you will get all meals. And as you heard, we not only offer breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but also tea time and midnight snacks. So more or less it's, and of course, an early riser for those very early birds. So in total, you will have up to six meals a day. So you will definitely not starve on board on our cruises. And then coffee, tea, and water is included throughout the whole cruise. We have three different water stations on board um, where passengers can fill up their water bottles, which they will get as an amenity of us with, uh, when coming on board in their cabin. So they will be waiting a water bottle for each of the passengers, which they can refill with the water from the water stations. It's either um, still or with gas, they can decide. And coffee and tea is always being served at the bar throughout the whole day. As you have heard, we also offer some zodiac excursions, as Hermann said. So those are, of course, also included in the price. And there's no need to pre-book anything. It's for each and every one. And we have Icelandic and English-speaking guides on board. So the whole expedition team is, of course, included. and unless with other companies, our expedition team is being on board the whole time. So it's not only they get to see the team while being in port on the excursions, but they are also staying on board with the guests. So <clears throat> are available at any time throughout the day for passengers to reach out to. And it is the same team throughout the whole cruise so the same 10 or 11 people so they can every day if they missed something on their excursion for example they can still ask in the evening or the next day the guide who was guiding this excursion is like hey can you please repeat that or i didn't understand so that's actually the good thing as well then we do have, um, as Herman also said, some onboard entertainment and presentations and lectures from experts. So our own expedition team is presenting those lectures, but we also sometimes have external speakers or external entertainment, but also throughout the cruise, our own 
team members will present those lectures or provide you with some entertainment options. And of course, last but not least, when booking a cruise with us, you will get the Iceland Pro Cruises jackets, which will be laying on board in your cabin upon your arrival. And uh, that's why in the board manifest before we asked for the jacket sites, but no one has to worry about it. We always have some extra sizes on board so people can exchange their jackets in case they don't fit in the end. So, and now I wanna give you a short introductions because we still have some last minute specials. We still have some open vacancies on board our cruise for 2023 around Iceland. So we have three specials at the moment going on, which all last until uh, the cruise starts. So the first special is our special one, the balcony special, where you will save 30% on the regular cabin prices and receive an additional 500 US dollar onboard credit per person. So this is actually a very good deal for our balcony cabins and those are valid for all Iceland circumnavigations, natural wonders of Greenland cruises and the combination cruise hot springs and eternal ice. The second special is our two for one special. So it means you save 50% of our regular prices this offer is valid for categories three to five. So that means two people travel for the price of one. So starting as of 6,940 US dollars. And special number three is the no single supplement special. So single travelers only pay the price for double occupancy, saying the same price actually 6,940 starting from, and this offer is also valid from category three to five. So if you have some last minute passengers, guests who would like to go to Iceland, maybe you give it a thought and introduce them to us. We have some great specials. And as Helen already said, why you should book with us because we bring Iceland on board. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoyed our webinar Explore Iceland with Locals. We thank you so much and maybe we see each other at some point either on board or via email or on the phone. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Erman and Svenja, for this presentation. It was really very, very helpful. I'm joining uh, an Iceland um, circumnavigation the first week of June. So especially for me, that was really amazing and gave me a, a great overview of what I will be experiencing in two or three weeks. Um, this webinar took a bit longer than we expected. We usually try to have everything within 30 minutes, uh, but I think it's really worth it to stay for longer because it was really, really very detailed, very helpful. So what we will be doing just for, we don't want to take more time on your busy day, we, um, Jenna and I, we will be taking note of all your questions on the control panel and we will be sending um, you by the end of this week a follow-up email which will include the answer to all those questions. We are not answering uh, live questions now, uh, just to take it shorter. And we will also include in that follow-up email this recording, the PowerPoint presentation, the digital brochure from Iceland Pro Cruises, which will include uh, the itineraries, uh, sailing dates and rates, um, as well as uh, the PowerPoint presentation. So I hope uh, this brought you something uh, new today. Um, 
If you have last minute requests, remember that we have those three specials with Iceland Procrucis that of course we will also include in the follow-up email. So if you want, you can do uh, an email blast to your clientele. If you want to do any posts on social media, please feel free to reach out to me or Jenna and we can share with you, we can give you access to the photo gallery or the video gallery so you can do a nice uh, post or email blast. So this is all for today's webinar, Circumnavigating Iceland with Locals. Thank you so, so much for your time, for your interest in Iceland Procrucis. And I hope uh, we will meet in person either in Iceland or in any of the sales calls we are doing in US and Canada. Have a great afternoon. Bye.